What we want to do today is really take the opportunity to talk about some of the great customer experiences we have on a global basis that we want to be bringing to India and we want to show the very best that Fujitsu has to offer to all of our customers here. So, first case that we want to talk about today is the airline industry. One of the things that we did, we, we worked with the airline industry in many regards. Airbus has been a global client for us for some period of time. If you know anything about the airline industry, it's a very competitive market. It's a market that is doubling every 10 to 15 years. And the business model in the airline industry has changed dramatically over those 10 years. In particular, no longer do people buy planes, they buy air miles. So if you're Air India or you're Jet Airways or whoever, you go to Airbus or you go to Boeing and you basically say to them, I want to buy a plane that keeps me in the air, serves my customers best, has the best safety records, and will basically keep me ahead of the competition. To do that, Airbus looked at its business. It had to track, in 2012, over 1.2 million devices on a daily basis. In tracking those 1.2 million devices, the maintenance records of those devices, the age of them, the whole history of, of terms of where the, the, the pieces were manufactured had to be understood in minute detail in order for them to ensure that they could serve their customers well. So they came to Fujitsu and we talked and listened to them in terms of what technology we had that could potentially help them in some of their business challenges. The key thing that we, the key piece of technology that we introduced was RFID technology. And not a simple uh, retail type RFID, but RFIDs that could work with engine parts and some of the most difficult environments that you could experience on the planet. What we helped them do is basically integrate RFIDs right throughout their supply chain and basically help them dramatically reduce their costs and also improve the safety record, the maintenance records, and their total cost of actually delivering airline miles to their end clients. This is a great example of where we have taken our technology, listened to the business problems that customers have, and then innovate with them in order to create a new experience for them. And it's a very successful model that we're starting to roll out across other industry sectors. Another great case for us was uh, in the banking sector. So we have a, there's a major retail bank in Spain called La Caixa. La Caixa has always had a, a great track record in terms of being very customer centric, very aligned to its end clients, and has a very large retail, branch throughout, uh, retail branches throughout Spain. However, one of the things that they were seeing is that as their clients required more and more services, as La Caixa wanted to launch more services, they did a study of their end customer behavior. And what they found is that you know, end customers really wanted a much quicker experience. But they also had customers that had maybe had physical disabilities or uh, sight impairment. Or, and these customers, they felt, were poorly served by the way that Lycaisha interacted with its end clients. So they did a deep study of their client base. They, they did this over a couple of years. And they involved Fujitsu in that journey. At the end of that journey, what Lakaisha decided to do was say, actually, um, interacting through branches or interacting through ATMs is actually quite a poor customer experience, a very narrow sense of what Lakaisha can do for its clients. But what they decided to do was say, really, uh, to get to the, the, the breadth of the country, they wanted to have a completely new interface experience for their clients. So what they did is they decided to reinvent the ATM. They decided to have an ATM that had many more user device capabilities, had much more better interaction, had a real UI experience that was also sensitive to disabilities, that could deliver all of the services, including the collection of cash where people wanted to make deposits, and basically upgraded the whole visual experience in a banking environment. What Fujitsu did with them is we worked with the display technology, we worked with ATM banking technology, we worked with keyboard technology, we worked with hand device technology, we worked with new card readers, and we completely reinvented the ATM for the Spanish market. 
This has been an unmitigated success for Lakaisha. Lakaisha have grown their customer base considerably. They're recognized as the most people-centric bank in Spain at this point in time, and it continues to be a great reference model for us and for Lakaisha. Now, I've had some experience of interacting with Indian ATMs, and I think this is a great opportunity for the Indian market. So look closely to some banks in India, hopefully getting this technology. But it is another great idea of where we are taking lots of the uh, technical information, a lot of the detailed business information from a customer, working with them, and helping them innovate in technology that they can serve their clients better. It's a great example of how we're building these things in action for our customers. So in the next case, is my, my, my colleague Paul will talk, talk a little bit more about this. In Tokyo, anybody who's, who's been to a major city understands the challenges of running a, a transport system. A, a physical transport system through there is a very complicated thing for a large metro area. Fujitsu worked with the Transport Metro Authority in Tokyo to look at the way that public transport moved throughout the city. Basically, inside every taxi, inside every public bus, inside some of the uh, tr uh, train and metro systems, devices were integrated by Fujitsu that could basically show the flow of traffic, f show the flow of people in various, in various ways. But not only did that, they then combined that information with, metro uh, with uh, meteo data, with weather information, with pollution information, with, um, basically, that would help them optimize the way that traffic flowed throughout the city. Using this was very innovative, and uh, this, this is a project that spanned some 10 years with the transport authorities in Tokyo. A very successful pilot for us. And out of that solution came a technology that was called Spatial, which basically helped us track devices as they moved around the country with location data. In looking at that, Toyota, who's a very big client of Fujitsu's, was really interested in how they could then take that technology and adapt it to what they were introducing to the market. So Toyota, as you know, are introducing a new fuel cell-based engine that basically is driven off uh, hydrogen. Now, if you're introducing a new technology like this, obviously you're going to have some challenge in terms of the logistics and distribution of how to renew power and energy into your car. So what they were really interested in was how can we help our clients? This technology is great. It's really at the forefront of being environmentally friendly. It will transform the way that cars are purchased and used in the environment. And it gives a great example of where innovation comes to market. But they were really concerned about how could they inform their clients of where the right cell stations were, where the most optimum route was to get there. So they used the ecosystem that we developed with the transport authorities in Tokyo and integrated it with this so that we could inform them the best routes to get to in a dynamic environment to renew uh, cells. And as that network of cell renewal uh, stations is rolled out across Japan, this system basically is dynamically scaled. It's cloud-based environment and will basically dynamically scale to adapt to Another great example of innovation and action and collaboration with our clients. So a bit more domestically. State Bank of India. So essentially, SBI had um, 20 individual, uh, what they called, IT silos that managed the bank. And obviously, everybody understands SBI is a, is a very uh, long and traditionally standing cu uh, customer in India. And you can imagine how those 20 silos of processes and systems got built up over a very long period of time. But what they were faced with is a different customer experience, not unlike Lakaisha. They wanted to get more services to their end customer. They wanted to get to into an environment where they could serve better. They needed to double the amount of transactions they were doing on a daily basis. They needed to ensure that they could double the productivity or increase the productivity of every end user inside the banking system to do that. What Fujitsu came up with was a solution that essentially spanned those 20 silos, created a new set of data repositories in a centralized data center environment, basically took those legacy systems, 
created new interfaces, stored that data centrally, and allowed new processes to span all of those silos in a much more efficient manner. So this is a continual story with SBI where we continue to innovate with them on a domestic basis. And it's been a very successful project for Fujitsu and for SBI. No, we stopped. OK. So if we move on to some of the themes that we're seeing throughout these type of presentations, we're starting to see the, the emergence of solutions that are solving um, many of the efficiency problems in existing systems by adapting big data or adapting device technology in order to serve that. You can see in all of these themes, they are much more customer centric. So they're not pushing technology into the customer, rather they're realizing the environment that the customer is coming from and trying to adapt and innovate with technology to solve a business problem. Obviously, in the manner in which we do this, it brings its own set of challenges, right? In terms of keeping things data secure, in terms of making sure that data becomes availability so that people can um, research and put new insights in how to exploit and use that data to their business benefit. So, my colleagues talked about a hyper-connected world. What does Fujitsu really think about this in terms of hyper-connected world? First of all, it has to be people-centric, right? Innovation comes from the creativity of human beings. It comes from the ability for human beings to collaborate in new ways. It comes from the insight that human beings can have to the way that data exists in our environment today and how we can then use that information to transform it process it, and get it connected in new and interesting fashions. That's what hyperconnected means. And the explosion of those hyperconnections is what is really driving us to think in new ways about how we do business. So I like this graph. It really paints a very clear picture. Most of the people in this room room are not too old to have remembered back to the one million mainframes or perhaps, right? Now, all of us in our industry careers have come through this journey and we can see the absolute amazing explosion of interconnectedness of things. And even though we will talk about IoT and many of my uh, fellow presenters will talk in more depth about these, one of the things that completely strikes you is the, the geometric fashion by which this is growing and how interesting that is going to be to creating new ways of doing business. The speed at which business is happening is accelerating at an unprecedented rate. Now, we want to try and frame the way that we think about this opportunity to actually help our clients go on a, a journey that makes their business future more certain. to be stuck. OK, so this thing about how can, how can we secure growth for companies in a hyperconnected world? Well, first of all, you need to frame the problem space that you're working in in a way that you can understand. How do you, how do you make sure that your business is secured in such a way that you can actually, oops. OK. Seem to be stuck again. Sorry about this. OK. So one of the ways that you need to think about this is that in the hyper-connected era, it's been a journey from where we've come. Obviously. We're back in the beginning of, of um, our trade in business. We were in this craftsmanship era, which then evolved into an industrial era where we could do things based on the assets, our ability to manufacture, our ability to do things efficiently, efficiently and at low cost. But we're now getting into an environment in terms of business that means that there is high scale, there is interconnectedness that we cannot necessarily understand today 
and that we cannot necessarily interpret in terms of the future outcomes. But that environment has its own dynamic behavior, and that dynamic behavior we need to tap into in order to drive better business outcomes for us. So my colleague put up this slide in terms of how people use technology, right? One of the things that we're seeing at the moment is that the new generation of people coming through use technology in ways that we haven't anticipated in business. But it's the people centricity that is most important in that, that creates new opportunities in business and allows us to think about new ways in which we can generate wealth and value to society. So this human-centric innovation is really dealing with people, with information, and with infrastructure. It gives that human empowerment. It really gives the sense that we can be more connected. And it gives that uh, ability for people to use their creative intelligence in new and interesting ways. So this roadmap for growth, how does it evolve throughout this? First of all, when you put people at the center of the, the, the roadmap for growth, you're giving that empowerment for them to create and innovate in new and interesting ways. When you scale that up to an enterprise level, if you have a collection of people that you're bringing together that really has access to large-scale infrastructure and information, they will find the ways to innovate with that information and create new business models. In turn, as we've seen with some of the examples we talked about before, you can then see industrial or public sen uh, sen sector start to exploit the technology in the commercial field for their own benefit. And again, that human-centric intelligence the society, that, that outcome where Toyota are then starting to innovate on the back of infrastructure that is being created in the public domain, but allows them to launch new technology which is more environmental and eco-friendly into the system. These are creating new shapes and new digital ecosystems that will then enrich the way that we, we run our lives. Here's another good example of the digital type ecosystem. This one is for the well-being of people. If you understand today, if you look at the different things that are involved in this, this life cycle here, in, in our society maybe 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, many of these things existed in isolation. But we now have the opportunity to see how they can become interconnected that can change the way the society consumes things. Obviously, when we're looking at the well-being of people, we're looking at a very complex ecosystem that starts from everything that we consume in terms of what we eat, what we consume, the way that we get treatments, the way that IT helps us understand uh, the, the, the way that our, our bodies are behaving, the way that research comes into play in terms of the treatment of, of uh, diseases and cancers, the way that hospitals then take the information that is coming from the individuals and process that, the way that patient records are put together, and the way that aftercare service is looking at us throughout the whole set of generations as we go through. This sense of creating shared value is really important where we get there. If you can see, again, we're getting into a system here where by the technology that we're putting into the hands of companies, we're creating well-being for people in a different way. We're creating the opportunity to live in a stress-free environment. As somebody who lives in Bangalore, I can tell you I, I look forward to having a stress-free mobility experience in Bangalore, which I hope is coming soon. Uh, education for all people. Uh, and, and in terms of all of these things are contributing to a better environment. So one of the challenges that we've got in enterprise is just looking at the way that we look at IT and its impacts in terms of how we move forward as a company or how we move our customers forward. So here's an interesting stat in terms of the amount of money that is spent on running an infrastructure compared, compared to transforming it or compared to growing it. We're all part of that uh, industry that sees complexity, we see lack of understanding of the data that we're holding, and we see a shortfall in getting talent into it. And the way that, we're well, the way that Fujitsu is approaching the, the, uh, the future in terms of the human-centric innovation, we think that this landscape then creates an opportunity for people to innovate in a different way. 
As we start to interconnect things, some of these problems will start to fall away. So how do we look at it in terms of the way that we work with our clients? How do we deliver it in different ways? First of all is mobility, big data, and security are fundamental uh, tenets of technology that are here to stay and will increasingly impact the way that we look at our businesses. Cloud and the ability to exploit um, very dynamic infrastructures, getting access to hu huge scales of integrated computing, and working in an environment which is much more defined by software than the way that things are physically interconnected will lead to a new set of uh, opportunities for us all. Another way that we look at things differently is two worlds. I think people can identify with the way that systems have been put together in the past is largely about the way so-called systems of record. You know, limited number of users, systems that are defined by the number of users they have to support, a fixed scale of things, rigid that we can't update them, secured in a way that is not too flexible, you know, the internet as it was configured in the past, and certainly everything happened to be defined in very well and understood processes. But if we think of things in new terms and the new opportunities that, that the new set of innovations brings us, we can see systems of engagement where the number of users is not well known or understood in advance, but systems behind the scenes can scale and accommodate them. Things are variable. They can expand and collapse in an agile and flexible manner. They link in with other things, whether it's the internet of things or other data systems in your environment. There's opportunities to connect things in an unprecedented way. Pulling in the noise from big data, from data repositories that are out there in the public domain or in the commercial domain, again, gives us opportunities to create new models for business and create new models that can serve in society. And again, this thing about unstructured data, this whole thing about so social um, communication, we can all see how this unstructured data actually l adds a lot of value in unprecedented ways. So one of the ways that Fujitsu is now looking towards its evolution in business is this thing about creating a digital platform, a digital business platform that basically links things together in a, in a sensible way that brings cross-industrial digital ecosystems. We see the legacy world in terms of transaction processing, and then we see engagement applications bringing in new ways. Cloud and connected infrastructure is already beginning to emerge in an unprecedented scale for all of us, and we can see how that will really hope, hopefully change the way that we interact together as businesses. So what we are doing is we are asking customers to come and listen to us. We want to listen and learn from our customers and build that expertise with our technology knowledge and build new ways that you can actually realize your business objectives by working with Fujitsu. So to close on today, I just want to, again, thank all of our business partners who helped to sponsor, sponsor the Fujitsu World Tour today. So please all give a big clap of thanks to them. And what I'd like to do is just end on saying that our aim here is to create a more human-centric, intelligent society by going through those type of journeys with our customers and getting into a better world. So thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>